I got an email from a client and it's after taking me about four or five days to stop crying about it before I take the time to read it out to you. And my intention behind reading it out to you in a, uh, there's no identifying factors in it. My intention behind reading it out to you is that if you find yourself in this person's position, or if you find yourself in a place in your life where you feel like you can't change or it's too late to change or that there's so many obstacles that it's going to be really difficult. Let this email be a lesson to everybody that it is never too late to change. Buckle your seatbelts. I'm going to try and not cry. Okay, let me read it to you. Hi Nicola. I have to write to you to tell you how your words and your very real attitude have changed my life. I attended a workshop of yours in January 2020. Your workshop was organised by my employer. This would not have been a typical training day. At the start of the workshop, you said something like it would be a tough day and we would have to take a look at ourselves and realise our boundaries and make changes to be who we really are. At this stage, five minutes in, I left the room in tears. And I remember that girl leaving because I was looking for one of my staff and I was like, check and see, is she okay? I remember her leaving. Although it was supposed to be a professional training day that was for work, I knew everything you were going to go through would make me look at my personal life. Because guys, people who think that their personal life and their professional life is separate are operating in a really stressful, inauthentic way. The only way for you to operate um, fluidly is by merging both. And that's why the work that I do works in corporates and personally as well. Um, I pulled myself together in the toilets and returned to the room. I stayed for the day and I took in everything you said. Every single thing you said hit me to the core. Everything you said, I already knew. And this is the point. We already have all the information that we need to have to thrive in this lifetime. And um, we just have to reconnect and take action. That's all it is. All I'm doing is shining a light on information that everybody already knows everything that they need to know. I just didn't believe in myself or my self-worth or my truth at the time. I had lost myself. And what the work that I do is I, I literally just help people find who they are again. That's it. It's, it. It sounds so simple, but it's not easy. At the end of the day, I can't describe how I felt. I felt like I woke up that day and I remembered who I was. I had fire in my belly. I realized my truth matters. I matter. I deserve to have boundaries and I deserve to have a voice. I cried the whole way home in the car because I knew that day was my, that my life would change. I would no longer not speak my truth, not be me. I was in an extremely emotionally abusive controlling relationship for many years. The, few, the last few years were particularly controlling. I was so beaten down, gaslighted and isolated. I was nothing. I was afraid to speak up or I would suffer the consequences. And who would believe me? This is a big problem, is people not being believed. To the outside world, I had the perfect life. In reality, I lived every day in fear and I cried myself to sleep every night and I couldn't speak a word out of fear. Two days after your workshop, I ended the relationship for good this time and I knew in my gut that was it. I tried before but I would get gaslighted, doubt myself and the toxic cycle would continue. Now we can apply this to intimate relationships, we can apply this to friendships, we can apply this to family members okay. Everybody's story is the same when they find themselves in this situation. This lovely girl goes on to say, 
long story short, I started to speak my truth with conviction. I didn't doubt myself. I set my boundaries. The abuse only got worse after we separated. We both owned the house. I had nowhere to go with three small children and no money. But I knew my worth and I know now I can do anything that I put my mind to. So I walked out the door with my babies and the clothes on our back. Seriously. We had a very large new house in a highly soft, sought after area. But it wasn't a home. I stayed with family for a while in rural Ireland. Covid was a blessing. We had no school and no work, so it gave me time and space to get myself together. I wanted to go back to Dublin. I connected with probably 50 landlords in Dublin. All the same story. I wasn't a suitable tenant or the places weren't suitable. Then I viewed a house and it felt like home. I told them my general story, asked them to consider me and I left. On my drive back to my parents, I thought about how I could get them to take me. Like the 50 landlords, an absolute disgrace. I was an unemployed single mother at the time due to COVID. And by the way, I don't want anybody referring to themselves as single parents or independent parents. There's a difference. I didn't look good on paper, but the house had to be for us. I had viewed other places and cried at the thoughts of my kid, kids living there. They were so bad. So I wrote them an email that night and I told them my story and I told them I know I'm not an ideal applicant. But I promise you I will love your house. My kids will love your house and I promise I will take care of it. I've owned my own home and I know the value in loving your home. I sent them a spreadsheet of my finances to show I was, an, I was excellent at budgeting and I would make it work. I could afford it. I had character references from various people. I asked them to just give me a chance and I wouldn't let them down. Only since then did I see your story, Nicola, where you wrote a letter to the home over, homeowner of a house that you wanted to live in. I did the exact same thing many years ago. And I bore my soul and this girl, girl bore her soul. There's power in allowing yourself to be vulnerable in certain circumstances. And thankfully, those good people gave me a chance and I got the house. It's small. My children share a room, but the yard is big with a great tree for climbing and the kids love it. It's a home for us now to live and laugh and feel safe and heal. Since your workshop, I found myself and lost my fear. I've started to speak up and tell my truth. I have the belief in myself now. My words are the truth and they hold value. I can just hear you in my head for the last 18 months. Speak your truth and stick to your boundaries. I just wanted you to know the life changing impact you had on me that day. I will never forget that day. Keep doing what you're doing. Oh God, lads. Sending the world of love from my family to yours. So this is the story, right? That's just one person. When I'm working and when I'm speaking, I always set an intention before I hit a live stream, right? Or I write a piece of work or whatever. And every single day that I show up, I, I want to touch one person. I want to change, one, help change one person's life. And it's easier nearly, I feel, for me to do it when I'm in the room with people. Um, and that day was a really powerful day that she's referring to, like it was a fantastic workshop. 
And it's really important for me to be able to help as many people as I possibly can while I'm here. And this is me calling and this is what I'm here for. Um, I've lived many lives, lives in this particular lifetime. And I've taken every single bit of knowledge that I have and I've put it in two places for now because we're restricted, because I can't do workshops. I've put it in Soul Works and I've put it in Soul Steps. Now you've never heard me saying Soul Steps before because we're going to be releasing it in the next couple of days. If you want to do deep personal development work with me, if you want to really go under the hood, you get yourself into Soul Works straight away. If you want to do daily spiritual practice and self-care, you get yourself into Soul Steps the minute that's released. It's going to be released in the next couple of days. But for anybody who is listening to this, who thinks that it's too late for them or it's too hard or there's too many obstacles or, it's too, or you're too old or whatever excuse that you're selling yourself right now. I want you to listen back to that video and listen back to the words that that girl said. It is never too late. She has changed the trajectory of her life forever. She has changed the trajectory of her children's lives forever. She has broken the cycle of dysfunction. She is now no longer allowing any other adult bleed onto her or her children. She's keeping her side of the street clean and she has risen up like a phoenix from the ashes and sorted her shit out. And you can do the same. Take it easy. Slag. So